five game weeks now done and dusted in the Premier League, we can probably start to draw some decent conclusions about players' performances and teams' performances. But what I want to know is, is Reese James actually nailed? Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Manager Weekly. My name is Reese, and we are committed to helping you and your team succeed at Fantasy Premier League. Coming up in today's show, we're going to review game week five. How did it go for me? What transfers did I make and did they come off, etc. Spoilers, I played my wild card. We're going to look at form and fixtures heading into game week six, as well as some cheeky Bucky's odds, nice and early captaincy. Our main topic, though, is is Reese James nailed? So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that question and try and answer it for you. We'll have a little look at the mini league, who's on top, review their team, and finish with stat of the day. And it's a really good stat of the day for you today, so make sure you stay tuned till the end. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and let me show you my team. It was a good week. 72 points is a good week. I played my wild card. The average point score this week is 55. The highest is 144. That's a game week rank for me of 715,000, which I'm very, very happy with, and an overall rank of 522 thousand ish which again i'm happy with i'm trying not to look at overall rank too much at this point of the season i think after about 10 games is where we'll start to get a true reflection of how your teams are performing in terms of point scorers sanchez got me one point he got the yellow card in that leicester game although brighton did win that game which bodes well for them going forward in my defense cancelo marshall and livramento so livramento came on as an auto sub and we'll see why in a second marsal one of the new sign-ins only one point they conceded two or three goals in the game against brentford with ivan tony and Embuemo having absolute stormers cancelo continues to be my boy put some respect on this man's name he's played 90 minutes in every single game for chelsea so far this season it's only a matter of time though before we see the bench in right then sissoko came in as an auto sub as well rafinha with his somewhat fortuitous goal got eight points gallagher with just the two against liverpool captain salah 24 didn't fall into the Jota trap again this week, which I'm glad of. A bit lucky, though, that he didn't bang. 15 points from Saar. Come on, Saar. Two points from Lukaku, who blanked against Tottenham, even though they had an expected goal figure of about four in that game, Chelsea. So happy with the Lukaku pick and Ronaldo with his goal. Six points. Could have had a hat-trick. The bench looks like this because of the no-shows from Trent Alexander-Arnold and Rhys James. We'll speak in depth about Reese James in a second. Trent had an illness, um, so he's flagged here. We're going to have to wait and see what happens from the press conferences, etc. What news comes out during the week? Do we see him training, etc.? As well as Rafinha, I would expect them both to come back and play, to be honest, but it's definitely one to keep an eye on for sure. And I'm not talking about Luke Shaw, just for sure. Moving on to form and fixtures, and Alisson tops the goalkeeping chart in terms of form, followed closely by his premium counterpart Edison and then David De Gea. Diaz comes in top with an eight-pointer this week in terms of defenders. Then my boy Cancelo, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Rudiger with his monster haul against Tottenham. Then Van Dijk, Duffy the cheap enabler who got another assist this week. In fact, I don't think it's... He's had many assists, but he's had a couple of goals. First assist of the season this week for Duffy. We've even got the injured Laporte there, Tommy Asu, who is someone I don't even know. Is he a defender? He's a Japanese guy. He's their new signing. He's a defender. Two clean sheets in a row. So Tommy Asu's on there. Then we've got Matty Cash, Janssen, Alonso, and Thiago Silva. Interesting that Alonso isn't. Um, on the top there I thought he'd be right up there it's just a really tricky one to go to with Chilwell waiting in the wings but if you have done it fair play fair play to you Salah on top where he should be in terms of midfielders then Mane Gallagher Ben Rama Gray Greenwood Torres and Kovacic Mane just slowly ticking over there one goal one assist one goal one goal I spoke about him in the watch list video yesterday. If you've got the cojones to go Mane instead of Salah just before maybe wildcarding game week seven or eight, I think it's a move worth doing because it could provide potential upside. That being said, look, 
look who's above him, Salah. So obviously he has been outscored by Salah on, in every game so far this season. Uh, maybe not the 2-0 the at Burnley, but it looks like every game so far this season. So it's, it's a 1-5 in, in five chance as it stands. Then you've got the GOAT, Cristiano Ronaldo, followed by Jesus, Edward, Antonio, Lukaku, Vardy, and Tony. Vardy, someone who was written off by many at the start of the season as an overpriced option. Many expecting Ian Acho to play in that front line as well. But Ian Acho hasn't played many minutes at all, and Vardy has continued to do what Jamie Vardy does. Three goals, one assist, racking up a total of 29 points so far. Are we all overlooking Jamie Vardy? Fixtures to come a decent Burnley and Crystal Palace away. Could be interesting to see people move for this guy now. And that brings us neatly on to fixtures. We've got three days worth of fixtures this week with Saturday, Sunday and Monday providing our Fantasy Premier League goodness. City against Chelsea is the big one on Saturday afternoon. United against Aston Villa is a great shout for Ronaldo captaincy. Everton against Norwich, you know, listen, could be a cheeky Damari Gray captaincy in there for anyone who has got balls of steel. Leeds against West Ham, Antonio is interesting as a captaincy choice there for sure. I will be genuinely frightened of Antonio this week because I don't think I will be owning him. Leicester against Burnley, again, listen, Jamie Vardy, he's got to be up there in terms of Bucky's odds of scoring in that game. It'll be interesting to see. Newcastle against Watford and St. Maximan. I mean, if you're going really, really crazy, he was absolutely insane in that game against Leeds. Liverpool, Liverpool against Brentford, obviously Salah, even Mane, if you're going for that route as well. I would avoid Jota. Listen, he just he just doesn't play 90 minutes and um by all intents and purposes, he didn't do well with his finishing on the weekend. Southampton against Wolves, Arsenal against Spurs, and Crystal Palace against Brighton are all hard avoids for me in terms of captaincy. So that brings us on to the burning question and the topic of today's video is Rhys James nailed and was I wrong about him? We know how good he is at being creative and crossing the ball and potential assists etc but that doesn't matter if he's not on the pitch you can see in game week one he only played 23 minutes personally i would put that down to the euros hangover for english players etc then he played 90 minutes in game week two and in game week three he only played 47 minutes but we know that was a red card right he got sent off the pitch and in game week four he was suspended and couldn't Play. So there's not much of a conclusion I don't think we can draw from this season so far. So I think we have to go back into last season's data to really find out what's going on here. But before we do, the big catalyst for this was obviously game week five, where I was expecting Reese James to start. And I'm sure a lot of people were expecting Reese James to start, but he didn't. And he didn't come on, thank God, for a one-pointer because it meant I got Liveramento off the bench nice bit of uh, jammy bench points there. So this led me immediately to go onto our good friend, the internet and Google Reese James, right? And the first thing that came up was about this robbery, which happened over the past few days. You can see here on the Chelsea website on the 17th of September, and I hope I don't get a copyright strike for showing this because it's, um, I had one before for showing a FIFA website, but the headline here is Tuchel, we are shocked by Reese James robbery. The club has given support to Reese James following a break-in at his house, Thomas Tuchel has confirmed, and he suggested the young player would be benefiting from the build-up to a big game like the one on this weekend as something to take his attention away from disturbing incident. So if you didn't know, I'll explain it to you briefly. Reese James has had his house burgled um, this week at some point while he was playing a football match. He posted it on social media. It was only a few days ago. This could be the reason that he was dropped on the weekend. We've seen it before with managers leaving out players who have had a kind of personal um, incident in their personal life, which has kind of maybe um, lost their focus, for example. I think back to a couple of years ago when Aguero had a car crash and Pep left him out on the weekend. This is the kind of thing which will affect a manager's decision making. You can see Thomas Tuchel here in the background looking at Reese James. He may have been looking at him 
through the past few days on the training pitch thinking about this robbery incident seeing him make a mistake or two or seeing him just not be focused and think right he's not ready for the weekend he's just lost that little bit of focus his mind is elsewhere i'm gonna leave him out these are the big decisions based on small bits of information that managers have to make and it could be a factor. So then I looked into the midweek game, right, in the Champions League. And you see here, Chelsea played against Zenit St. Petersburg on the 14th of the 9th, 2021. And you can see here on sofa score, Chelsea won 1 0, and Reese James played 90 minutes in that game, posting, by the way, an astonishing heat map look at those touches i don't know if you can see that so that leads you to think or well, maybe he played midweek and was left out on the weekend because he was a bit tired but no these elite teams they don't leave their best players out because they play wednesday saturday they just play wednesday saturday you can see a little alonso rudiger christensen asper laqueta kovacic Jorginho, lukaku and i think mount although mount only played 45 minutes all played on the weekend and played a significant part in the game so i don't think that's an issue although it's a possibility so that's when i decided to look into last season i googled the dates so when did thomas tuchel take charge of chelsea i found that it was on the 26th of january or at least that's when this article here was released and it says that he takes charge on wednesday so i went to understat.com plugged those dates in being the 27th of January, right? And you can see here that that is the Chelsea versus Wolves fixture where they drew nil-nil. And I can remember that fixture. I remember that being his first in charge. So I filtered all the Chelsea players in the team from that date and sorted them by minutes to see where Reese James came in the kind of pecking order in terms of minutes. You can see Aspilicueta there on top, 17 appearances and 100 and you can see Aspilicueta there on top, 17 appearances, 1,516 minutes. I don't think there's a question about it. He is the most nailed Chelsea defender. Then you got Mendy there on 1,398, and we know he missed one, maybe two games uh, in the Premier League in that period. Then Mason Mount, then Rudiger, and you have to go down a couple more places to find Rhys James, just below Jorginho and Werner, which I don't think it's too bad. It's 1184, right? Whereas Werner's 1205, Jorginho 1311, and Rudiger 1350. So it's 100 plus less minutes than Rudiger, but he did make more appearances. So you can guarantee there will be some substitute appearances off the bench for Reese James. It's going to happen. 18 appearances here to Rudiger 7, but with less minutes. I've been warned about the one pointers. I think it was Harry from FPL Tips. We were having a chat and um, I was asking about Reese James. He said, beware of the one pointers. So I have been warned about those, right? So I'll take those on the chin when they come. But I just wanted to double check then about his injury status because I know he was injured at one point during that season, right? So I went on transfermarket.com and I found out that Reese James did have an ankle injury in December 2020 and also a thigh muscle strain in January. 2020 specifically returning on january the 15th so i suspect he probably didn't play that game against wolves and i didn't actually go in and look but i'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't because what i did there is i just moved the date range over to february right because if he was coming back from an injury okay that maybe skews the data a little bit so i, I put in february the first and i filtered from february the first see if there's any change in minutes and and there was reese james goes from 1184 minutes down to 1168. So we clearly played about 30 minutes in that Wolves game, right? Coming back from his injury, etc. So that makes sense. He's popped up here to fifth in terms of minutes under Thomas Tuchel last season, which is good. That's just behind Rudiger, just behind Mendy, Mount, and Aspilicueta. Again, you've got more appearances and less minutes so you're expecting the one pointers whereas rudiger only 13 appearances but more minutes it makes sense because he's a center back you're not necessarily going to be subbing him on subbing him off etc so what conclusions can we draw from that well of course it's inconclusive right but i'm happy with the choice i think that the data all kind of stacks up to say that reese james has kind of given the night off against tottenham because of the circumstances surrounding his personal life. A sneak peek into the bookies odds then for next week. Our good friend FPL Salad tweeted out this amazing fixture analysis tool from DraftHound and I need to get in touch with them to make sure that 
they're okay with me using this on the video. But you can sort teams by odds on 2.5 plus goals, odds on clean sheets and odds of winning. So we'll sort the teams here by odds of a clean sheet. And you can see Leicester and Liverpool on top this week. Chelsea obviously play Man City, so they're both down here in 31%. And then you've got the likes of Watford, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Brighton and Man United and Everton above them. So a really spread out week this week for a change for clean sheets, which is interesting. This kind of data normally affects my team selection, but when you look at my team now after my wild card, there's not much to be choosing. I've got a first team and I've got a bench basically. So this is my first team. We've got Sanchez in goal against Crystal Palace. I'm happy with that. They got 36% chance of a clean sheet compared to the numbers that we just looked at. Then we got Cancelo, Marcel, Trent, and Reese James, okay? We've talked about Reese James. We've talked about Reese James in depth. Obviously, Trent, I'm expecting to be back from his illness, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Salah, Gallagher, Rafinha, and Saar make up my midfield. I'm thinking about potentially moving Saar down to Gray, okay? Everton play Norwich, and I have been targeting Norwich all season, and that's how I got my 15 pointer from Saar last week. Maybe I keep hold of him because Newcastle is a good fixture as well and he's obviously in form now. Or maybe I just keep chasing the Norwich thing. It's an idea in my head anyway. I do want to roll my transfer though ideally. Rafinha again flagged. Need to keep an eye on him. And Gallagher against Brighton. Although he plays against my goalkeeper, you can't avoid people playing against your goalkeeper, right? Especially when you've got a £4.5 million Brighton goalkeeper Salah. He's got my vice captaincy and Ronaldo gets the captaincy. This could move between one or the other, but I can't see me going with anyone else this week. I won't own Antonio because I've got Lukaku and a 4.5 million pound striker to fund the Lukaku Ronaldo double. And then I've got Sissoko and Liveramento on my bench. We've got a new leader in the mini league. Paps get back last hurrah. Now, I did get a comment in um, one of my videos, I think it was yesterday, saying, oh, Reese, I think you should review whoever's top of the mini league every week. And I got a feeling it was this guy who left the comment. So he had 80 points, which is very, very good. That's a game week rank of 209,281. So well done, Paps, get back. Let's have a look at your team. Sanchez, White, and Tierney. So good clean sheet points there. Alonso, what an absolute hero. Marcel Jota, unfortunately, Traore, unfortunately, but Salah captain, Saar with his 15-pointer, Bamford and Ronaldo make up the team, which built him 80 points. That's really, really good, right? You can see he's number 48 in Andy's Let's Talk FPL League, 28 in Dan's FPL Mates League, fourth in the Fantasy Football Hub of Green Arrow League, and he's, yeah, he's smashing those leagues, to be fair to him. So well done to you, sir. Absolutely well-deserved. And don't worry, there's your there's your team review. Start of the day today is brought to you by understat.com. Well, it's not brought to you by them because they're a free website and they're totally not affiliated to us in any way. But I just thought I'd bring you one of my favorite metrics, which is non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes. So that's expected goals, which is essentially the quality of a shot. And anyone who is directly involved in that expected goal filtered out per 90 minutes so you get a kind of average, then excluding penalties right i filtered it to 180 minutes just so i could get ronaldo on top 1.67 expected goals per 90 minutes he's only played two games so it's a smaller sample size than the rest then you got lukaku 1.08 antonio great captaincy these are all all three of these are great captaincy shouts this week he's on 1.06 conor gallagher on 1.02 then mané on 0 0.97 and Diogo Jota coming in just above Mohamed Salah. Thank you very much for watching today. Do hit like if you've enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you are new. You can support me on Patreon here. Check out my latest video here and subscribe to the channel here. See you soon. Bye.